Okay, well, welcome back from Thanksgiving break. Hopefully you all had a good, nice, relaxing uh, break. We have two regular weeks left of class, and then you're turning in your um, final renderings. So there's not much time left, which means you should start working on those final renderings that are actually ready to go. Um, today we're going to spend one more day dealing with line drawings uh, out of Rhino. And you, you can tell that I think it's important because I've spent three class days going through it. Uh, we did elevations first, then we did plans on Wednesday, and now we're going to do sections. If you missed class on Wednesday, it's still worth going back and watching the lecture. Um, but a lot of what we're going to do will repeat today um, as, a, as, an, as, as part of today's exercise in the um, sections. Because basically a plan is a section that's going horizontal versus a section that's going vertical. So essentially everything that we talked about uh, last class we're going to repeat today. But I still think it's worth going through it and repeating it so that you guys can, uh, can get a sense uh, of how to get sections out. Next class we're going to go through and revisit our renderings. You'll be able to pick any of the renderings that we've done already and we'll try to do a final quality one um, in, in terms of pushing you forward. Next week while it's beyond the scope of this class, I think it's important that I at least explain that Photoshop can do a lot of the stuff that we do in renderings. So I'm going to spend at least one day next week lecturing and showing you what can be done with Photoshop, uh, and how to use channels in your renderings, and then combine them with Photoshop, uh, and those sorts of things, because I think it's good for at least you to see how it all comes together. If you've already taken 135, then it makes a lot of sense. If you haven't taken 135, hopefully I'll convince you that that's a good idea. Um, to take 135. I think you're going to have to take it anyway because it's a prereq for some of the classes. Um, but we'll kind of go sh through a little bit of Photoshop. The bulk of what we'll do next week is really troubleshooting and getting you through your final renderings. So we're kind of at the, the very end uh, of the semester. So that's where we're going from here. Obviously, the Monday the 14th is the last day of class. Class starts at 10.30 instead of 11 that day. So you'll come at 10.30. Um, we'll hang up all the, the final renderings on the wall. You're going to do each of your four renderings on uh, an 11 by 17 sheet, so the image by itself. And we'll print it, we'll hang it up, and you can look at all the, the renderings uh, together. If you do a line version or are proud of a line version of your drawings, by all means include that. It's not required. I think next semester I will make it required, but I'm still exploring. And I'll ask your opinion of, of whether you think it's, it's worth requiring it as part of the final. Um, and then we'll hang them all up on the wall. You guys will have donuts. You'll fill out a course survey. And life will be great, and you'll move on your way. Okay. So today, um, we're going we're gonna to work on the next or the last of the line drawings. We're going to talk through a section. And let me just get set up here so that I have a mouse that works. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and open um, the file that I had from last class. Actually, I'll go back to and use the one that I created the elevations from, and I'll open that, that elevation file. And once I have the elevation file open, and I'm, I want to go ahead and update my, my file with my most current building. There we go. Remember, I want to make sure that I save this as a new file, because what I do will permanently destroy parts of my model. So I'm going to go into today's folder for 229. And this is fall of 2015. So I'm going to call this section. So I know you guys already did the section once, so it's possible that you want to open the section file and work from that. Um, I'm not doing that because I want to walk you through the whole thing again. Um, but if you want to just open the section file that you already have and work from there, there's no harm in that. Um, OK, so I'm back where I have my, my file. Let's switch for a second into the perspective view. Let me go to perspective here so we can have a look. And I'm going to want to take a section through my file um, somewhere going this way. I'm going to do a longitudinal section instead of a, um, 
a sideways section here, a cross section. So I'm going to start with a large vertical plane that passes through my, oops, my C plane is off here. We'll go back to world top. And then we'll do a large vertical plane. I just want to make sure that it intersects the whole model. And this time it's going to be um, vertical instead of horizontal. Last class we did it the other way. Uh, I'm going to move in here a little bit. And I'm going to move this. And actually it might be helpful to do this in the top view. I'm going to move this so that it slices through my building. And I'd like it to slice through the set of stairs. And I think as I look at this, I think I would, I would prefer that it slice um, through this set of stairs. So let me move again. And we'll do the upper flight of stairs. I'll cut through it right about there. I think that'll work. Okay, so let me go ahead and look back in the perspective view. And we can see that plane intersects everything in my scene. So now that I have that plane, I'm going to go ahead and establish a section cut using the Section Tools plugin, which we've done before. I'll go to Section Tools, Create, and select objects to section. I'm going to say All. And then I'm going to hold down Control and deselect this. Looks like some of my stuff is locked, so let me go ahead and unlock everything before so that they're unlocked. And let me try this again. ST create all except for that big plane. I'll go ahead and press enter. And then I'll look through my options. Right? My direction, I want it to be in the x-axis. I come over here to solid mode as surfaces. That's correct as well. Right? I'll go ahead and hit enter, and I will then get the section line. I want to type F for flip so that it goes the opposite direction. And we'll go ahead and uh, I could turn on center snap and snap right to the center of this uh, there. Right? I could also create another one just for fun, flip, going the opposite direction. So I end up with two sections this time, one each way, depending on which view I want to look at. Um, so I'll go ahead and hit enter. Now that I'm done, and it will build out those two sections, 0, 0, and 0, 1. 0, 0 is the one I'm going to use primarily, so let's go ahead and just turn off 0, 1. I can also, at this point, um, hide this, this uh, large section plane. I'm going to use it a little bit later when I do my split. So let me go ahead and make a section 0, 0 layer. And put ST00 on that, and we'll also put a sublayer for S. T00 plane. And let me change the object to be on that layer. And we'll turn that off for right now. Okay, so if I was looking at my scene here, let me zoom select it on this. If I wanted to see this view, I'd go to Section Tools, View Section. And it's going to be ST00. And I want to see it in the perspective view for now. And there it is, slicing right through my building. Right? And again, it was supposed to fill in with surfaces, but I still have yet to fix my model and add the surface up here that it's supposed to have. It's my mistake. Um, so it didn't actually fill in uh, my surfaces correctly. But I do have a very nice uh, section view of this model um, looking at it. Now, just as we did, as we said before, this isn't going to render out in a clay render because um, the, the section tools isn't recognized by V-Ray. But I can create a make 2D of this section. So let me go ahead and switch one of these views. So instead of perspective here, I'll go to set view. And I'm going to do this, the same elevation view. So I had a south elevation view. Um, and I'm going to view my section in the south elevation. So let me do ST view. And it'll be ST00 as my section. And I want it to show in south elevation. And now I'm seeing it 
in this view. So I can see it easily in the perspective view here, but I can also see the view that's going to be my true regular elevation view uh, as south elevation. So let me go ahead and do a few things before I actually do my Make 2D. I want to go ahead and fill in the surfaces because I'll get a better Make 2D if I fill them in right now. So let me go ahead and work on the ST00 layer. And I'll work with some surfaces here. Corner to corner is fine. Uh, and actually, it would probably be easier if I used a C plane that was let me do three points just to make my life a little bit easier. Turn off center. Yeah, we'll go in that direction. I'll go in that direction. And let me go ahead and go to my corner to corner. So depending, uh, it's going to take me a little bit of time to work through this. But essentially, I'm building up the surfaces that represent what's been cut through. Bear with me. There. It's been cut through. One more little piece right here. So I'm just working my way around my drawing here, filling these in. And again, if I had spent a little bit more time and was more accurate in my model, I could have solved this problem before I did the export. But sometimes it doesn't work that way. there. Okay, so all that's been filled in, right? Likewise, it wouldn't be a bad idea for me to do the, the terrain on this side. I'm going to need this stuff ultimately anyway. Um, so let me go ahead and dupe the edge of the terrain. If I can get it. Uh, I'm going to have to intersect it instead. Uh, let me ST clear views. And let me turn on my big plane so that I can intersect my surface. To get that line, that's what I wanted. Now I can type ST view sections again with ST00. And we want it to be in the perspective. And I'll turn off my big plane here. There we go. Now I'll have that curve. I'll have this curve, the other side, right there that represent. Uh, I should go ahead and draw a curve that goes underneath the rest of this building here. So we'll go over and over. Over 
there. And then we'll select it, join so it's one curve. And then we can do an offset of that curve. Probably easiest to do it in this view. Offset by yeah, 100 feet or so, that's fine. And then we can loft these two together, which gives us our nice solid surface there. So if I go back to my south elevation, set view, south elevation to get this. ST view sections with ST00 shown. Oops. ST view. ST00. And this is going to be in the south elevation. There we go. Now we can see it. And so I've gone ahead and I've, I've filled that in. I have all of my little walls filled in. It's now time to do the make 2D of this particular view. So I'm going to go ahead and type make 2D. Um, the, the key thing is that I also have the um, viewport rectangle shown. And I have to see, I may have sectioned off. Let me ST clear views. And I'm going to clear one view. There, so it's clear in this. I need this rectangle right, shown. And unfortunately, it wound up being hidden in that section view. So let me go ahead and change the layer. Change object layer. And now, if I go into my south elevation, go to set view. Elevation and ST view sections, ST00. Perfect. So there it is. So I'm going to make 2D. I'm going to draw all the objects. And I'll go ahead and press Enter. And it will give me the Make2D. It's going to be the current view. And I can choose, again, to maintain the source layers or not. Uh, for the scope of this, I'm going to uncheck it so that it's simplified. I'll go ahead and say OK, and we'll let it run. And remember, this takes a couple minutes for it to, to actually work itself out. <laughs> So now that it's done, I'll go ahead and switch into the top view. And somehow I lost make 2D. Let's try that again. So I'll switch into the top view, and there's my 2D view. All right. uh, it looks like it didn't export the viewport boundary, so I'm going to go back, go ahead and erase that, or excuse me, delete that. This was the second version of it. We'll get rid of that. Don't need all of this. Um, and so it appears that let's get rid of this. I didn't export the viewport boundary, so I have to go back and make sure that this is shown. For whatever reason, I selected it accidentally um, when, I, when I drew it um, or when I created the section. So let me go ahead and, and create it again. Um, let's make SD00 active. I'm going to, in the south elevation, I'm going to show 
my camera. There we go. And I need to go ahead and draw. And I'm going to turn off everything except for point snap here. I'm going to go from there to that point, which makes this line. And then I'm going to scale that by 2. And that should now be shown. Um, let me make it. All right, so that's now shown. For whatever reason, it's not showing up in my south elevation view. How nice. <laughs> Try that one more time. It's always nice when you're trying to do stuff and it doesn't work, right? <coughs> All right, well, I'll have to sort out why that's not working. In the meantime, um, after I've done the Make 2D, I need to go ahead and do the clay render of this view. And in order to do that, I have to split my building in two. So this is where it gets very destructive as an operation. So let me go back into the perspective view here. I'm going to turn on that large plane right there. And I'm going to go ahead and split everything. But before I do that, since I know that I have some stuff as a block, I'm going to go ahead and, and select my building, we hope. There it is. And I'm going to go ahead and explode it. Likewise, I'll select my ocean and I'll explode. I probably have some more things hidden in here that need to be exploded as well. So let's go ahead and keep doing it. All right, I want to make sure that there are no blocks and that everything is individually selectable before I do the split. So we'll go ahead and turn back on my big plane. I've left the ST00 layer off, which has my fills in it. And we'll go ahead and do a split. So I'll type split. Select objects to split. It will be everything except for the big plane. And we're going to split them with the plane. All right, so the split finished. I'm going to now look at this in the side view here. And I want to take everything that's on this side and turn it to a see-through material. Let me actually switch the view from the right to the left just to make selections easier. And I'm going to select everything that's on this side, right there, except for the glass. So once again, I have to go back into my uh, layers and turn off the window glass 
and I'll turn off the railing glass there. All right, so those are both done. I'll go to my materials and I'll load up the see-through material. So let me right click and say load material. And I have the see-through material on my flash drive here. There it is. And I'll apply this to my selection. Like that. Now I need to select the other half of the building and apply a basic default white material. So I'm going to switch my view to the right view. And the reason I'm doing this is just to make selections easy so that I can select everything on the back half of that section line, like this. Looks like I missed a little bit of stuff here. There we go. And this needs to be a basic white material. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll just create a standard default material. We'll just call this white. And I'll change the color to be white. And so I'll make white on this selection here. Now I already turned off the glass, so I'm not that worried. And for the scope of what I'm trying to do, I'm going to go ahead and just leave the gra glass off um, because it's not going to make much difference. Uh, in the final rendering. So now I'll go ahead and jump back to my south elevation view. Right? I'll make that big. I'm going to turn off my big section plane so that I have just this view looking. And now I can go ahead and render, but I need to make sure that I have the clay rendering settings set. So I'll go ahead and go to my V-Ray options. Now before we went to global switches and we overrode materials, I can't do that this time because I want the see-through material to apply to the stuff that's in front uh, of my view. So I have to uncheck the override materials. Uh, beyond that, everything else is set correctly because I already preloaded um, my VizOp settings to be the clay render VizOp. All right, so everything else is set well. Um, I'm going to go through and confirm my camera the physical camera is on, shutter speed of 20. Uh, I've already established the directional light for that mimics the sun. So everything should work. I'm going to go ahead and go to my output here. Uh, I want to unlock it, get my view aspect so that it matches. Then I'll lock it again. And then I'll go ahead and do a render of the clay. And we'll see how it turns out. It should be relatively fast because there's no real materials being applied. So we'll let it go for a little bit, and we'll see how it turns out. Okay, so it's gone ahead and rendered. It turned out pretty well from a section standpoint. I forgot, however, to turn on my ST00 layer, which was all the, the ground that I created. And I should also apply a material to that layer. And for right now, I'll go ahead and apply the white. And we'll go ahead and re-render it one more time.
All right, so there it is finished as the clay render. Right, gives me a good backdrop. Notice that I am getting light cast through the open windows. Uh, they happen to be falling on the stairs in terms of location, but the point is that they are being cast through the see-through material, which was what I wanted. So I'll go ahead and I'll save this as my clay render part of this scene. section I'll go ahead and say so I'm gonna pause the recording for a little bit and solve why I didn't get my correct make 2d building envelope um, and then I'll, I'll come back and show you the illustrator collage part okay <coughs> All right, so I'm going to continue along because I figured out where the problem lied. It, I had a mistake in where I had the camera set, and that's why it wasn't exporting the viewport boundary. So anyway, now I have the sectional line drawing that was created out of the Make 2D. From here, I can go to Export Selected. Oh, I have to move it to 0, 0 first. Let me go Move, 0, 0, Zoom Selected, and then we'll Export Selected. And I'm going to export it as an Illustrator file. And let me jump back to today. And we'll call this section. S00. And in options, I'm going to do the 48 to 1 quarter inch <laughs> equals a foot. I'll go ahead and okay, say OK and say Save. And that will then save the Illustrator file. In the process, I managed to uh, alter my, my view a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and re-render this as the clay rendering. The settings are still set fine. I'll re-render it, and then I'll call you back again to show you the, the final post-processing in Illustrator.